make sure that you're doing the right thing. And of course, at the end of the day, we pray that God blesses your hustle. It's always a prayer, it right? It is well. Africa. Yeah. It is well. It is well. It is not well. It cannot be well. You know, they always say that once you, you pray a lot when you're in Africa, the moment you travel and you go and live in the UK and the US, you stop praying about the same thing. God bless me with a job. Bless me with money. Because it's there. It's available. So is it about the, yeah. the system here that makes it, you know, very easy for you to find God, whether you like it or not? Because Shelley... I think it is true. It is, and right. I have a friend, Edwin, in mm. Canada, mm. told me that. I mean, he moved from is it ICGC or Harvest to ICGC, one of them. Mm. Great prayer guy, mm -hmm. prayerful guy. Mm -hmm. When he went, Charlie, you for clock the time and make the money. Charlie. I mean, he still did his prayer by himself. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, here the stigma is that if you're not in church, yeah, you know, they, you're, you're not said to be worshipping, etc. Mm. And even your pastor could chastise you. It, it was not. And then I asked him, uh, ha, ha, have your prayer points changed? And, yeah. he, and he said yes. They have changed. Yeah, because immediately he got down, he got credit for a car, mm. down payment. God answered now, his prayers. Mortgage, etc. And, and, you know, those are some of the things that the advanced and developing countries have done. Yeah. That is creating the buffers for their citizens to be able to live well. Mm -hmm. And if you come to think of it, um, they are taxing their population to be able to give us enough either to go and borrow as grant, um, as loans, mm -hmm. or perhaps give us as grants that if we fall below that line, or even make available in the capital markets for us to go and borrow, yeah. of course, at a, a relatively high cost. Mm -hmm. but. It's because they always have to get it from their citizens or whichever worker population that they have. I, and that is why our politicians and those who tend to manage the economy have um, citizenship for their children and their spouses, etc. Mm. They go to the best schools out there because, I mean, you're going there, the buffets are there for you. Exactly. And I think that it, I, it, it's high time sometimes they try to replicate some of these things right mm. here. It's important. And I, I saw a tweet from Sadiq Adams um, just yesterday, about eight hours ago. He says that you cannot say, for instance, that the leaders of the oil-rich Arab countries are clean from corruption. They live ostentatious lives and spend big. But the moment you touch down in their countries, you can observe the quality of life of their people and their advancement. At least the taxes and resources are used for the betterment of the masses. That is how to steal, in quote. Uh, come to my hometown. It's... It's really sad. And speaking of which, I mean, things are so dire that we're losing our nurses and our doctors. They're leaving in drones uh, to see greener pastures in, um, you know, quote unquote, the more developed countries. That's what we're discussing this morning. Now, um, well, this morning we're asking that question, what can we do to ensure that our nurses and doctors don't leave us, um, you know, and travel to other countries just to make life better for themselves? They have the skills and that's the problem. They have all the skills that are required. Remember that at the time the UK and the US were asking um, for some nurses and doctors from Ghana and other African countries to travel to their country to work there. So we decided to hit the streets to find out what exactly we could do as a nation to ensure that we keep our skilled labor here. But before that, I remember that Dr. Titus Bayo, um, at the time, before he went into politics, I mean, he served as the general secretary for the Ghana Medical Association, and he was decrying this problem. I remember that he said that he wasn't going to give any figures, but I remember that was an interview he had with you. He says, I can give you some examples. I will give you a unit in one hospital. I won't name the hospital, but it's a big one in Accra. From January till now, and this was in 2022, five doctors have left that unit. This was May 11, 2022 and he was saying that so many of them are leaving and then just about a, a couple of weeks ago we also heard from dr david tinkran chum the general secretary of the ghana registered nurses and midwives association and he was saying that some 10,209 nurses sought clearance from the grnma um, secretariat between january 1 and july 7 this year to leave the country for greener pastures out of that uh, 4,000 were cleared and they've already left the country to work abroad that's between January 2023 and July 28th, 2023. Let's listen to Perpetual. Um, she's the head of the Ghana uh, Registered, nurses, nurses. Uh, Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. Let's hear what she had to say. Our colleagues migrate 
emigrate out of Ghana for greener pastures, and the workload continues to increase on us. In some units, we know you are already burnt out because that kind of specialized units where you are working in requires specialized skills. And all those colleagues have done what? They've gone abroad. Beyond all these challenges, I just want to encourage you. We have been called to serve, to serve our fellow human being, who always comes in a vulnerable position. So let us care with all the passion that we can. And I'm sure that a lot of them start this job with a lot of passion until they realize that we lack equipment, the facilities are nothing to write home about. I mean, you remember the surgical unit at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, and that's something that Johnny um, really hammered on. It was in very bad state, and this was just a few months ago. And the nurses were asking that if you leave us to work in a place like this and we have a better opportunity out there, what stops us from going? We'd rather choose a softer life than this. We still want to save lives, but we have to save ourselves first. Just yesterday, a Nigerian nurse was buried. Guess what? So she got into the elevator in one of their, their big hospitals, and the elevator sunk, and she died. Just it fell, sunk. It fell, on, fell on, yeah, from the, the top rail. onto the ground. The okay. And they, they kept saying that this is something they had complained about for many years, that that elevator had a problem, and nothing was done about it. And one of their very own people, unfortunately, <clears> got in there and lost her life. And I mean, it, it, Nigeria is just close to us. We also have our issues here. And the doctors and nurses will tell you, enye better, sir. Well, we'll pick some phone calls at this point. We want to hear from you. What do you think we can do to keep our medical staff here in Ghana so they don't leave us and go out there to save other lives when we are also in need of that kind of attention? Call us and let us know. Mm. Hmm. It's, it's, it's a sad it's a, situation. It's, it's a very sad situation when you tend to take a look at it. Because averagely, we're supposed to be having at least for 10,000 people, um, a medical staff or, let's say, doctors, an equivalent of nurses, about 49. Mm. And currently, that's not the situation in Ghana. And even though it's improved, the World Health Organization standard is one to a thousand averagely. That is for those average poor countries. Even that one, one we're not... One nurse? Yes, one. To 1,000 people? Averagely. You see, doctor, the doctor to the population ratio, for example, it has to be one to at least a thousand. It has to be one that to That is thousand. if you don't have any at all. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we, we currently are around um, one to about uh, 6,300. Hold it. You know what? We have a caller. We'll come back to this, this figure. <laughs> Ajiman, good morning. Good morning, brother. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you work in the medical field, first of all? Uh, no, please. I okay. Don't. But what do you think can be done? Well, I think it can be done to help sustain the medical practitioners in these countries. You know, the facilities that they have mm. are inadequate, mm. frankly speaking. They are very, very poor. And they are living under a condition where it is not suitable for anybody mm. to, con to contain. Besides, you all have a family to feed. Everybody wants the fact that they are helping this country doesn't mean that they don't have anybody to take care of. Mm -hmm. They are working to earn salary. It is fine, it is good. But they're supposed to live in a certain condition whereby it's going to help them to do the work in a very enthusiastic way. The work, sometimes when you go to some uh, facilities and you see the the area, we see that this is not a good place for them to live. Go to go to the foreign countries. The work will the 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 atmosphere over there will let you do the work with all your with all your mind and heart. Mm. The facilities, the the hall, everybody everything there is is good. Even if you're not getting paid, you're going to see that you're supposed to work your ass out. Mm. But here, T T look, at, to you. look at our places. Mm. It is not well organized. So when they go there, and they're sitting down there and receiving people and then treating them well. Mm. They are treating them, but the atmosphere over there is, is, is compelling them to, do, to go somewhere. Mm. And the salary too is meager. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the working, look at the, 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 the cost of living in this country. Every now and then things are going up. Mm. 
این هم بودی بود سا ما نسان اینجور چه داری؟ یه همه خزبان چه امی بشی؟ خده خزبان بشی سپوستی هم به خزبان Things are not turning out. Things are really not turning out. The public workers are really suffering. Frankly speaking, they are suffering and they are supposed to go where they, are, they will get something to help their family. Actually, they are supposed to help their family. Mm. The, the fact that they are, they, are, they are protecting us and then helping us regain our health doesn't mean that they should abandon their family yeah. and then live in a very poor way. Hmm. No, they are supposed to go. Well. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this matter. I mean, he, I think he hits the nail right Thomas Avoka on our stream says it will take a nurse, average nurse, over 100 years to get $1 million. <laughs> that a politician. <laughs> well, but uh, at the end of the day, um, there are some key concerns. And, yeah. and, and I believe that once we're not meeting the um, average marks to per population ratio, as set out by the World Health Organization, then we have to be told what really are the strategies mm. um, for us to be able to train more. Because even those that already we've trained, we're not able to be in a position to even deploy them. Yeah. Uh, I have this one from Lawrence, uh, who says that my wife is a nurse. She gets that if she gets a chance, she will go. Hmm. Myself, my wife, uh, I'm a teacher. If I get the chance, I'll leave. Yeah, but I don't think everybody has to be in a position of despair, so to speak. Well, Emmanuel, good morning. Hey, good morning. You're calling us from Akusumbo. Thank you so much for joining us. Speak to us, Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Um, I want to give the help. Emmanuel, your, your line is pretty bad. Can you just reposition yourself? Let's see if that could work. I think that yeah. the, the, uh, in as much as a lot of um, our doctors and nurses are living out of this particular country, mm -hmm. uh, the, the leadership of the Ghana Medical Act Mm. Uh, including that of the nurses, I think that they are not doing a very great service to us. Because uh, if you look at we, the medical schools now we have, we have that of University of Ghana, mm. we have that of UCC, we have that of UDS, yeah. we have that of a, um, the University of uh, uh, Allied Health Sciences. Yeah. So you just imagine even if all these particular medical schools are producing even 150 doctors a year, mm -hmm. can you imagine even the number of clinics that will even have doctors? Yeah. So maybe going forward, what I think that maybe government should be doing is to really look for people who want their job, not people who want to enter there only to travel. So maybe what government can do is that it can provide some special kind of funds mm -hmm. so that it can help pay fees of maybe um, the nurses, some of the medical doctors, and put them on bond so that when the person finish, the person can work for maybe a period of about five to six years before maybe his bond period is over. I believe that when this particular call is made, people that are actually... Um, admitted into the medical schools and the nursing profession will be people that really have that kind of uh, uh, feeling at heart. Mm. It will not be people who just enter there and they want to travel. Mm. Mm. Okay. That is right. my humble appeal to you. Right. All right. I think we're all very close to medical people, whether those yeah. in practice or those who are just out of school. They are not getting posted. Exactly. Especially those out of school. Exactly. So, and we shouldn't um, not have any mind that they haven't been bonded. They have mm -hmm. been bonded. Have been. At least those who have been trained from the midwifery and mm -hmm. the other uh, mm -hmm. training colleges, mm -hmm. they have been bonded. Yeah. So the question is, why are they then leaving? Then the greater concern is that you're having experienced people. Like, for example, Moajima is saying mm -hmm. the wife has practiced for 12 years, is willing to leave. Many of them, even sometimes, the modalities for which they leave, they go out there and go and find that yeah. I, I'm only going to do palliative care or some, just, uh, mm -hmm. some other care Something. instead of just core nursing. Exactly. Because uh, the other countries also have a certain criteria, the examinations you have to write before they you do. get into the NHS or the other And as of November um, 2022, the 2019 groups of um, nurses, unemployed, a group of unemployed nurses at that time, they were saying that um, 10,722 of them had not been employed, the 2019 group. So that should tell you that, yes, we're churning then out quite a number, years. but we're not posting them, and that's what the yeah. problem is. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Bella. Good morning. How are you doing? 
I am fine, Dada. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hey. And I'm Chinese sure your Roland, voice you are Roland using to like speak sexy to. Sexy voice this morning. No, 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 no. But, no, no, but no. sorry, I didn't quite get your name. I know you're calling from Tamale. Moses? Yes, my name is Moses. Yes, Moses, yes. you're welcome. Speak to us, sir. Thank you. Yes, um, the, quite an interesting uh, topic. Yes, mm. but then uh, I must congratulate you all, T3, for making us always uh, enjoy your morning show. Thank you. Um, just to add to uh, your the topic, mm. you see, we have to properly diagnose the problem before we can begin to find solutions to them. Mm. What is the problem? We have a high cost of training. When you look at the nursing schools, the cost of training is high. Mm. When you struggle and finish for four years, okay, mm -hmm. including your national service, you are made to sit for like two to three or more years before you are employed. Mm -hmm. My dear sister, where are you getting the money to fund yourself? Then to have to sit for like three to four years before you can get a job to do. And even if you get a job, an average nurse takes like 2,500 a month. Come on. Yeah. Can the person survive? Yeah. And these are the, some, some of the problems that are compelling the, the teen youth mm -hmm. to want to leave. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, unfortunately, we've lost our mm. caller. We hit the streets as well to find out what people thought. Maybe later we'll play it for you so you can also get an idea of what the situation is. But let's cross over now to Johnny's Bites.